and welcome back to my channel where I'm going to cover the Rogue's Scout class specialization from Xenother's Guide to Everything, providing a brief description of the subclass as well as explain and set up the various features gained. Scouts are a special class of character, and I don't mean that they're unlike other classes. Because they have many things in common with barbarians and rangers, they prefer to be ahead of the group, looking out for the dangers so that those who come behind can avoid those dangers. This class of character is going to be very useful in a party that is always going to be on the road, specifically when traveling through areas that are treacherous and dangerous, in that they can help avoid all of those dangers. Much like the ranger, their skills allow them to move about wilderness areas with ease, and get into skirmishes using their movement to their benefit. Once again, rogues get to choose their class specialization at level 3, so you will have time to consider what subclass you wish to take before you get there. However, let's go ahead and upgrade this particular rogue to level 3 so that we can actually choose our class specialization, which is the scout in this case, and then start taking a look at our first features. The first feature your character will gain is called a skirmisher, and it gives you the means to use a reaction when an enemy gets within 5 feet of your character and allow your character to move half their normal movement away without provoking an attack of opportunity. This does not mean that you can move into melee range and then move without getting hit but more around that you can attack someone at a longer range, and if that someone moves closer to your position within 5 feet of your character, you can skirt away, preventing them from attacking. However, as this is a reaction, it means that you can only do this once per turn. But as you're using a feature to trigger the reaction, that feature is already, quote-unquote, queuing up the conditions that that reaction has to match against thus allowing you to make use of the feature immediately when triggering your reaction. Also at Rogue Level 3, your character will receive the Survivalist feature, granting your character both proficiency with, as well as the means to use, double proficiency for the nature and survival skills. This means that regardless of if you had proficiency with the skills or not, you're instantly gaining double proficiency with both of them. So let's go ahead and set this up. So on our skills tab, we will have nature and survival. In this case, we're proficient with both of them. What we do get the ability to do, though, is set both of these as double proficient. At rogue level 9, your character will receive the superior mobility feature, and it grants your character additional movement speed of up to 10 feet on top of your character's normal movement. If you happen to also have the swimming or climbing capabilities, then the increase in movement speed will also apply to them. But this does not apply to a character who is simply jumping into the water and simply swimming across the pond. However, if your character does not have those capabilities, you will still see a slight increase as to how far your character can move. And this is because if you're simply swimming across a pond, then you're using twice your normal movement speed to do so. So you'll be able to swim 15 feet, for example, if your normal movement is 30 feet. With this feature, that would increase to being able to swim 20 feet because your character will now have a total of 40 feet of movement. So to set this up, all we have to do is go to our character's main tab, and we're looking at modifying our speed here. We do this through this magnifying glass. And in this particular case, what we want to adjust is 10 additional feet, and we're going to throw that in the miscellaneous column. That gives our character a total of 40 feet of movement. At Rogue level 13, your character will gain the Ambush Master feature, giving your character the means to gain advantage on initiative rolls and providing an attack advantage to the rest of the party on the first creature you've hit within the first turn of combat. However, once the next turn starts, you and your party will lose that advantage and attack as normal. And this is going to be the first feature that we are really going to want to add to our Actions tab in relation to this subclass. I'm going to call this Scout. And minimize that for now. And what I want to do is add two effects to this particular class, or feature, I should say. The first one is simply going to be giving us advantage on our initiative roll. And I'm just going to copy and paste something that I've already set up here. And it's called Ambush Master, semicolon, ADV, INIT. And that's advantage for initiative. This one applies only to your character, and it's going to expire on your next roll. So when you go ahead and execute an initiative roll, you add this to your character first, and then make your initiative roll, and then this will drop away. Now the second effect is what is going to give advantage to the other party members. The problem is going to be 
when you're dealing with someone who has multiple attacks, you're going to want to pay attention because you're going to want to set this up to actually potentially expire on next action or on next roll. We don't want to do a round here because if your character happens to go third in the initiative roll and two other of your party members have already gone, they're not going to gain advantage of this. It's only after you yourself have attacked and hit a particular target. Once your character has hit that target and the other party members' turns come around, they will gain that advantage attack. Anyone who went prior to your character will not, unless they're using a reaction. So we want to ensure that either on next action or on next roll is what is set here. And I believe on next roll is going to be the right call in this particular case. You'll just have to make sure that you reapply it to anyone who happens to have multiple attacks. Because this will benefit both of those attacks for anyone who happens to have an extra attack, like a fighter, for example, or a ranger. So how is this going to work in a combat scenario? Well, as we can see, we have our rogue inside of the combat rotation. And right now, for some reason, the turn marker is on that particular character, even though there's no initiative roll yet. So prior to the initiative actually being rolled, we have to apply this to our character. Then we can go ahead and actually roll initiative. And I'm going to do this on the DM screen just to simplify things for me so that I can roll it for everybody. Now we can see here that even with advantage, our rogue did not get that great a roll. But in this case, we're still going to gain a benefit because our ally still happens to have an initiative roll that's lower than ours. So we can continue to show how this is going to come into play. I'm going to set this rogue up to attack the vampire. There we go. And I'm going to make an attack roll. This is most likely going to miss, but let's say that it hits. No, oh, actually I hit, so I'm going to roll my damage. Now, because this character has hit, I can now set this particular target up, if you will, the vampire, to either grant advantage, which is an option. I could have used grant advantage here and then thrown that on the vampire. or I can go with the option that I've set here and drag and drop that onto that particular character. So now when the ape's turn comes around and they go ahead and decide to attack the vampire, they will be able to do so with advantage. And in this case, we dropped a 1 for a 17, which allowed them to hit, so we can roll the damage. Now, there is two disadvantages with this. If you happen to drop the advantage roll on the ape one and they decide to attack the white dragon, that advantage roll won't apply to that white dragon. It's only going to apply to the vampire. That means that in theory, we should have applied a grant advantage attack from the vampire over, but here's the problem with that. You can only really have that expire if and only if you set it up to expire after a turn or on every roll. Well, if you've got five people who are following after you, you're going to have to make sure that you set it up five times after the fact if you set it up so that it expires on each attack. Okay, so let me show you what that third effect looks like. This is where we set it up so that we're granting advantage on an attack to a target. So what I mean by that, and let's say we set it up on a round and we expire it on the next roll, just for kicks. So instead of this being applied to Ape 1, this is going to be applied to the vampire. Now, whenever someone attacks that vampire, they're going to gain advantage on it. So if I make my attack again, because I've set up the expiration after the roll, it has gone away. I think that's going to be the best compromise. So I highly recommend using the grant advantage on the attack for attacks rather than using this but we can leave all three of them here so that you as an individual or you as a player can choose the best method at the time at rogue level 17 your character will gain their last feature called sudden strike giving your character an extra attack as a bonus action but only if your character made use of the attack action itself and that's attack with a capital a now you might be asking why am i making that distinction and that is simple because the attack action with the capitalized A refers to all of the actions you can take during an action round. 
So if your character happens to have extra attacks, they would both fall under that attack round. If, however, you were being told that you can only make a single attack, and that attack is with a lowercase a, that means that it's specifically that attack that that feature applies to. As an additional benefit, if your character has not already made use of the sneak attack feature against the target that your character just hit, then you will be able to make use of sneak attack against that particular target. Meaning that if your character has the ability to attack two times per turn, but they attack two separate creatures, each of those creatures can have the sneak attack damage applied to it. However, if your character attacks twice, and it's against the same target, you would only be able to use the sneak attack feature once. But outside of that restriction, the normal sneak attack actions simply apply, in that your character must have advantage on the attack, or one of your character's allies is within 5 feet of that particular target. So in this particular case, it makes sense to put your character within range of two separate creatures, that way you can make use of your sneak attack capability in both cases. The ability for the bonus attack, as well as the sneak attack capabilities, don't necessarily need to be added here as part of the sudden strike feature. You already have the sneak attack capability here, you just simply need to expand it and roll the appropriate amount of dice there. I haven't been increasing it because that's not part of this video. But if you wanted to, you could add Sudden Strike to your character's action sheet and add in the same attack benefit you get through Sneak Attack as part of this feature just to simply tell the Dungeon Master that you're utilizing Sudden Strike and that you're rolling the amount of damage for your Sneak Attack from that feature. It's entirely up to you, but in this particular case, it's just as easy to leave it as it is now. And that's going to bring us to the end of all of the features that you're going to gain through the Scout subclass. And Scouts are a very useful character to play, but primarily in wilderness areas, as they are meant to function in that role of scouting in advance of the overall party. And it doesn't really apply well to an urban area or the insides of dungeons and whatnot. Their ability to also help with the ambushing of unsuspecting targets of a given party can really turn a combat situation to the party's advantage right from the start if all the die rolls simply line up. giving anyone who happens to be within the scout's party significant advantage over that particular first combat round. However, this does bring us to the end of this video. I hope you found it useful and informative, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. I wish to thank you for taking the time to watch this particular video. I hope you found it informative and useful to familiarizing yourself with Fantasy Grounds in general, and that you had fun in the process. If you found the video useful and you liked the content of the particular video, go ahead and click that like button to let me know. And if you have any questions specific to the topic covered by this particular video, or just have some comments in general, please feel free to post something in the comment section. I will do my best to respond to any questions that are asked. Additionally, I do release content quite regularly, and it's generally specific to Fantasy Grounds or 5th edition Dungeons & Dragons at this time. So if you'd like to be notified when new videos come out, go ahead and subscribe and click the notification bell to ensure that notification is sent to you when I release a new video.